You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Well, hello again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. It's Friday, the 9th of August, 2019. It's been another very exciting week for the precious metals. So it's time for your Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke. And joining us this morning is Eric Sprott himself. Eric, good morning. Good morning, Craig. And uh, who would have thunk it? Fifteen, fifteen hundred dollars on gold, two thousand in Canadian dollars, like record high. Uh, we're kind of uh, got a lot of mo going on here, so should be fun. We sure do, my friend. And I would encourage everyone to stop by the Sprott Money site, just SprottMoney.com. Check out the deals page. You will always find the best prices for physical precious metal. You can store it with us as well. Just come to SprottMoney.com or call us at 888-861-0775. And one reminder, every month we hold our what we call our Ask the Expert series. And that's a recorded podcast that, that uh, with various experts in the precious metals industry. This month is someone new that I encourage folks to make sure you listen to, maybe submit some questions if you want. It's a guy by the name of David Rosenberg. If you follow him on Twitter, you might have seen his work on Zero Hedge. He's the chief economist and strategist at Gluskin Chef and Associates in Toronto. And a very wise wise man. I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to visit with him. And we'll do that uh, next week. So if you have any questions for him, send it to submissions at SprottMoney.com. Or you can tweet him. Put your questions at us at Sprout Money as well. All right, Eric, let's get rolling. It's been a fun week. All of this uh, currency devaluation stuff, currency war stuff, Trump tweeting about trying to weaken the dollar, the Chinese pegging the yuan above 7 to 1 for the first time in about a decade. Gold soaring now by more than $50 this week. Silver up more than 70 cents. Uh, what are your comments here on this fine Friday? Well, uh, before I get into all the exciting stuff, I was you kind of surprised me with David Rosenberg, who I have the greatest admiration for as an economist, okay? He's a great guy. He lives in Toronto. Uh, we've had many conversations together, and uh, that will be a very good listen. He's a very realistic guy. Yep. I know he's, I know he's a, a bear these days, which I think is quite appropriate, so I would uh, certainly recommend that everyone listen to that podcast. Uh now, in, in terms of gold and silver, yeah, very, very exciting week. Uh, the whole notion of uh, the uh, the currency war with uh, three banks, uh, central banks, reducing rates during the week, uh, India, Thailand, and New Zealand, and, and pretty good cuts, too. Two of them were 50. I think one was 35. And as you say, Trump suggesting he'd like to get a weaker currency, I mean, it's all just leading into gold and silver and, uh, you know, the Ray Dalio paradigm shift. We have a paradigm shift going on here, folks. This is this is a new kind of reality. It's like all of a sudden, you know, um, having quantitative easing, which we never had before. This is a currency war, which we've never really had it quite like that before. Well, we're in it now. And it really says in order to save yourself, you have to be in gold and silver. And for example, uh, we've had uh, gold and silver and uh, Canadian dollars up 25 percent, up 30 uh, percent in uh, the Russian ru- Russian rubles. Uh, we've got uh, Brazil up 25, Mexico's up 25, uh, Australia's up something like 30. Even in actually, even in the U.S. dollar, we're now up 25 percent year over year. I mean, think of the profit of well, one. Wouldn't it be nice to have owned? gold and make 25% in 12 months, okay? It's way ahead of the stock market. It's ahead of everything. And it's not just a a new occurrence. I mean, gold bottomed in in early 16. So we've had a good good run here. We've probably, what is that run? Is it we've run about 40% now since 16. We're in a bull market. Yeah. And we, we got the momentum on our side here. And I keep thinking about... Let's say take the change in uh, the U.S. dollar price from, let's say, 1200 to 1500 $300 change. What do you think the average gold mining company has done to their earnings? Exactly. You know, most guys don't make $300. Now they're just handed a $300 bill on every ounce that they weren't getting before. I mean, at a minimum, their earnings have doubled. Doubled. And yet the UE index has gone from, what, 160 to 220 something like that. So it's up uh, 
forty odd percent, but the earnings have doubled, and we're and and we're rolling. I right. mean, who's to say that it won't be seventeen fifty in another six months with what's going on today? So there could be another doubling of earnings. So the opportunities, in my mind, are immense here. Yeah, Eric, I, I, I'm going to put kind of three points together and have you run with it. I mean, one, the fact that. Uh, gold is at all-time highs in so many other currencies, British pounds, Canadian dollars, Aussie dollars. I mean, you just go around the planet, it's at all-time highs. It'll soon be at all-time highs in dollar terms then as well, you would think. And you combine that with now $15 trillion in negative yielding debt around the world. I mean, that was always the argument against gold, right, is that it has a negative yield. you got to pay to store it, and it doesn't pay a dividend. Well, you eliminate that. And then lastly... What's the global allocation to gold in all its forms? Maybe one half of one percent? Put all those three together oh, yeah. for us. I know. It's just amazing to think that, well, for example, even people buying gold and silver today in the fake markets, the fake gold and silver markets, which is the uh, SLV and the GLD and things like that, in my mind, and the COMEX for sure. Uh, I mean, you see the money just pouring into these things. And and you have a short position in silver, for example, of 1.2 billion ounces here in the COMEX. The Shanghai short position is around uh, 700 million ounces short on the Shanghai Futures Exchange. There, there isn't that amount of silver around, okay? The, all these fake markets are keeping it suppressed, but they couldn't possibly deliver. And imagine, if, as you say, if people really wanted to come in and buy these things, you got such a short position already. What's going to happen here? You know, when somebody says silver could go to 50 or or $100, you know, I get it. I get what can happen. It's ridiculous, the suppression that's gone on here. So, and, and, of course, now we're at $15 trillion of, uh, of negative yielding debt, which you referred to. And every central bank says, well, we want to reduce interest rates. Yeah. Well, we're we going to have $30 trillion of negative yielding debt in 12 months from now. What's that going to do to the, the demand for gold? That now has gone up almost 25% in every currency. 25. What do you get at the bank? Oh, you lose one. Oh, I could make 25 or lose one. Let me think about that for a second. You know? Exactly. Like how long do you have to think? How long do you have to think about it? Exactly. And it's not just, in, it's not the individual so much like you and I and everybody listening that figures that out. It's the global pension fund managers and the, and the global yeah. institutional and hedge fund managers. And they, if they right. start reallocating to gold, we're, we're, there's only so many mining stocks you can buy. There's only gold in so many forms that you can buy. And it overwhelms everything if, you know, if it really heads in that direction. Right. It, it's absolutely impossible. You know, Ray Dalio said you should have 10% of gold and silver. Oh, my gosh. Oh, come on. You know, we're at one half of 1%, even if you're at three quarters of 1%. Now you've got to buy 16 times more gold and silver than you have already well what do you think is going to happen here folks you know there's only one way it can happen that's the prices have to go up to make the percentage ownership bigger because you can't buy it it yeah. doesn't exist we've already we're already undersupplied and everything because we have these big short positions we've oversold it ahead of time so how do you get in like it's just going to be chaos so and that's what's going to happen and the, the other thing and i've said this many times i think here Thank God for computers, because a computer keeps telling the portfolio manager, oh, by the way, the number one performing group is precious metals. Oh, by the way, the number one performing group is precious metals. And what do you have in it? Nothing. Right. Well, what's your job? What is your job defined as? Being where you should be. And they're going to come around to it, okay? That's just the way it happens. Well, and you've told us now for months, which I thought was extremely insightful, that it's always the big companies, the high leverage producers, you know, they're making $100 an ounce at, at uh, $1,300 and now make $200 an ounce and double their earnings at $1,400 and triple their earnings at $1,500. Yeah. That that's where, the, that's yeah. where you see the action. You've been absolutely right. Sure. I mean, that's you see some of these uh, stocks that were out of favor, El Dorado, Detour, they're just rocking here. So and 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 I can tell you from my own experience, I'm I'm out there now buying uh, companies with ore bodies, where the ore body is going to become economic at fifteen hundred dollars and seventeen hundred dollars. And of course, they were just being thrown into the garbage uh, a month and two months ago, and now all of a sudden, people can yeah. they can see okay what happens when the price when you do the new uh, 
uh, feasibility study and the price is 1500 not 1200 Oh, my God. Now it's got a return on investment of 33%. That seems like a good investment. Let's go build that mine. Yeah. So there's these huge, and those stocks go crazy. I mentioned back in 2000 when Seabridge went from a dollar to $35 when they were out buying ore bodies that would work at $400 and then the price goes to $1,900. <laughs> and it went up by 35 times. And there's there's other examples of things that have even moved more than that. So there's a huge opportunity here. Eric, we've got a list again uh, from uh, some listener questions that we need to get to. But before we do, I just anything else on your radar this week you want to make sure we discuss? Uh, just the economy continues to suck. Uh, we had uh, good uh, uh, tonnage that went into the ETS. There's 62 tons went into the gold ETS in July. Uh, I would imagine it'll be even bigger. I mean, look at the momentum we had this week. You know, we've had, like, that move in the gold price, whatever day it was, was it Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, my God, I've never, I haven't, witnessed many of those okay the and it's the world the world is focused on gold the world not just the united states okay it's i think it's the world thing more than it's the u.s thing and the u.s the u.s investors are being sort of hauled into it here by what's going on in the rest of the world because the rest of the world sees record prices so why wouldn't i want to own that as you know think of the analogy of losing one or making 25 okay and what if you find out at the end of this year instead of losing one you could have made 50 Right, like, and if you're in the gold, the gold stocks, you'll probably make a hundred. When do you make a hundred percent? We gold stocks went up one hundred and sixty percent in the first seven months of sixteen, twenty sixteen. I'm not going to be surprised to see the same sort of thing happen here for these uh, seven months from, let's say, June first to uh, December first. It could be crazy what they go up by. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think it's smart to emphasize uh, th- this is very likely, you know, we're not at the end of the road here. I mean, this is the proverbial, you know, train leaving the station kind of thing because the trade war, uh, the global economy slowing, uh, the central banks cutting, interest rates going even lower. All of these are the fundamentals that are driving prices in the first place. And they're only going to continue, it would seem. It, to me, it feels like deja vu all over again. 2001, 2002, you know, when nobody cared. Nobody cared about gold and silver stocks. And you had, was a killing field out there in terms of buying things cheap, okay? And they all went up like huge multiples, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of percents. And that's what can happen here. I mean, who's to say, I don't, why, why do we stop gold at whatever price you want to stop it at, 2000 1900 Who's to say it doesn't go to three or four or $5,000 with the UDC that's going on here? Yeah. Yeah, like it's clearly very possible. Well, all right, my friend. Again, we try to answer as many questions. We get a whole bunch of them every week, and in our limited time, we try to answer as many as we can because we want to respect everybody that took the time to send us one. Uh, but we and we get a lot of questions on a great number of individual mining shares, and Eric and I kind of go through the list every week before we get started, and and we look at every single one, and I ask Eric about every single one, but if. You know, I know, Eric, if you don't have an informed opinion on something, I know it's not something we want to get into. So sometimes we, you know, we hear about stocks like, uh, let's see, Canisil Resources or Equinox Gold, things like that that got sent in this week. If we don't ask, you know, if I don't ask Eric specifically about your company, just assume that it's something that Eric didn't have an informed opinion on. But I do want to start, Eric, with uh, a couple that I think you do know something about, maybe Sokeman. You've talked about that yeah, one before, well, and uh, sure. DeGray. Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, well, it's interesting. Let's well go with Sokaman. I mean, they've, they've uh, stepped out their drilling here. They've had some other good intersections. Uh, it's a slowly evolving play. We haven't quite got the continuity that we're all looking for. But then again, we don't have much market cap, so it's not going to take much to move it here. And I, I think they're on to something uh, uh, in Newfoundland. Uh, so um, it, it it could get a lot better because they seem to be understanding the geology. But, of course, we always got to wait for the drill bit to prove it up. Uh, in terms of DeGray, uh, Kirkland Lake had a position in DeGray to play the Pilbara slash uh, uh, other uh, normal gold play they have in, in Australia, which is like a shear structure instead of a... Uh, a nuggety type pilbara type yep. thing 
Uh, and they've, they just did a deal with Novo where they did a joint venture on some of their edge, what's called edge in the properties. And by the way, Novo came out with, uh, well, Quentin Henning's been interviewed a couple of times recently, and uh, he's, he's talked about the, this edge in a property that they have in the Pilbara and the fact that the top two meters seem to be uh, gold-bearing, and uh, we're going to have some results shortly on what sort of gold he's coming up with. And if they ever come up with anything, like above a gram uh, a ton, <laughs> or not even a gram, that guy could come up with a quarter of a gram a ton, and it would be very economic. He's just taking the top two feet, yeah. two, two meters off. And, it's, and, of course, he's got thousands of square kilometers of this stuff. So, I mean, this whole Pilbara thing could come back on the, on the playing field here. And of course, because the gray has a joint venture with them on their edge in the properties, uh, that would be uh, very enticing as well. So the whole, the Pilbara thing could come back on the playing field here. If, if the edge in a work, cause it's just right on surface, easy to mine. It's just a, a shovel and truck thing. So it, it could be quite exciting. How about, uh, some of the others that I know you follow closely, Wallbridge, uh, Chesapeake, some of the others. Sure. Well, first of all, Walbridge had three drill holes that they uh, released on Wednesday, I guess it was. I haven't had the opportunity of speaking to the geologist there yet, because they have also a lot of holes, which they show on their uh, on, on, on the figures that they present as being very laden with visible gold and gold intersections over long, long widths. Uh, so the only long width we had was 100, and, I think it was 91 meters of 0.98 gold, which is uh, perfectly suitable for underground uh, or open pit mining, either one. Um, but they shown long sections, like things that are like 500 meters long, that have these gold occurrences all along the way. So I would say it's quite encouraging. I'm looking forward to talking. I'll be talking today. Unfortunately, they were tied up yesterday down in New York, and uh, uh, they didn't have time to chat about it. But I will probably right after this call uh, make contact with them, but I think it looks good. Um, I got involved in a company called Brixton, uh, which I bought 25% of. They're also up in the Golden Triangle. Uh, they had a huge intersection. I think it was like 553 meters of 1.98 gold equivalent, and half of it was silver. And the silver part hugely intrigued me hugely intrigued me because i think silver is going to just knock the ball out of the park here so i like that uh, uh people should take a look at it it's a speculation because it's a, again a drilling play and you never know what drilling plays but it sure looks like they've got the goods there okay i mean they they've had other holes previously that showed good silver intersections uh so it, it has all the earmarks of a big porphyry system typically the silver's at the top then you get to the gold then you get to the copper and it's kind of shaping up that way so we're going to stand by in that one plus they got their atlan properties also in the golden triangle that they'll be drilling which has had some stunning former historical gold results so uh, we'll see how that goes um chesapeake gold the reason i bought chesapeake gold uh was i saw chesapeake on a um a table of, of people who leveraged the silver, okay? And it was, let's say, halfway down the list. And I'm looking at this thing. Chesapeake's levered to silver, like number 10 levered to silver. And, of course, I knew, hey, they got 18 million ounces of gold. Are you kidding me? What's the silver got to do with it? And so they got apparently, you know, a, a resource of uh, 500 million ounces of silver and 18 million ounces of gold. Uh and it's in Mexico, called Matate. And uh, with these prices at fifteen hundred dollars, I mean, I I don't really know what the uh, the uh, return on investment would be, but I can guarantee it's going up real fast. Now it's going to cost somewhere between two and four billion, depending on the mining plan. But I suspect that with these prices, that's the sort of thing where, where the, the ore body comes back onto the table of being economic again. Yeah. And all of a sudden, instead of having a hundred million market cap, maybe you go to a billion or two. So that's uh, something I got involved with recently. Eric, it's getting late and you're being very generous with your time. And I know this is very insightful for everybody listening, but I want to be respectful of your time. So I know you got some stuff you got to do. I've got just one last question for you. 
that somebody sent in and they listen to us every week and this is something that has bothered them for quite some time and that's if you go to that website the US debt clock which is like usdebtclock.org or something like that a lot of people have seen it it's like a spreadsheet looking thing with all the numbers flashing and changing almost every second and it says there the gold to dollar ratio is $5,945 an ounce and it shows silver at 724 so does that not mean that maybe the the silver gold ratio or gold silver ratio should be eight to one instead of ninety five to one? Um, well, just your thoughts on what well, yeah, all that means? Sure. Well, first of all, two things. Well, one, the debt clock tells you what gold should be worth. Okay, it's particularly knowing that fiat currency is valueless, will be valueless. That, that's almost guaranteed. Okay, because the U.S. in my mind, if they if they had to put on your balance sheet your present day obligations, you're broke. We know that. Everybody knows that. Okay, that's a given. Uh, now, turning to uh, gold and silver, one of the reasons I get excited about something, you look at that gold-silver ratio. I look at, for example, the amount of people that's going into s- putting money into silver versus gold based on my proxies of the GLD, the gold ETF, and the SLD. It's like six to one. So there's $6 going into gold to $1 going into silver. Well, why would the price be 90 to 1? What's with the 90 to 1? In the Earth's crust, I think it's 12 to 1. Typically, when it used to be a currency, it was 15 to 1. What's with the, what's with the 90 to 1? It's just absolutely preposterous that it would be there. i got to believe that it's, you know, the commercials are able to rig this market up because it's so small. Imagine that you could buy all the, probably all the silver that's available in inventory to be bought might cost you all of $15 billion. You know, what's the debt clock going to go up by today? Is that going to go up by $15 billion today? Yeah. Yeah. What's the world debt clock going to go up by today? Like, what's $15 billion? Nothing. And then you see this money is pouring into the, uh, the silver ETS and, and the, the COMEX, which is a fake market, but it's all paper. Uh, but you can see that the interest is there. So why is the price not reacting? And uh, I, mean, I was reading some great commentary this week saying, you look at the volume of trading in silver and gold. These things, gold could go up by $500 a day based on the kind of volume we have going into the various uh, gold instruments. But it's being held back, okay? And when the dam breaks, we'll look out. There should be a, some serious action here. Absolutely. I hear you. We're all waiting for that, Dave. In the meantime, uh, it sure has been a lot of fun these last couple of weeks, and I would sure think it would continue. And I would encourage everybody that enjoys listening to these discussions every week to visit SproutMoney.com. You can actually get the weekly wrap-up and other articles that are posted during the week from industry experts sent directly to your inbox. You just simply sign up for our newsletter at SproutMoney.com, and uh, you'll even get a chance to win a Sprout Gold Wafer. Wafer. I like it. Wow. Anyway, SproutMoney.com. Check us out. That's where you'll find all the deals as well. Again, call us 888-861-0775. Eric, thank you so much for all of this information this week. It's been very beneficial, and I hope you have a great weekend. Sure. Well, Craig, look, speaking of information and being helpful, people should also look at your website because your the cost of your subscription is like a measly 12 bucks a month, and uh, the value you get for that is incredible, so I would not encourage them to uh, go to your website is it tfmetals.com or tf metals report tf metals report there you go they should look at that so that's very kind uh, of you you've been helpful and i hope we've been helpful to everybody too it's been an exciting time and uh again we will i will not going to be with you next week because i'm going to be fishing up in the the canadian arctic uh way way north of the arctic and the arctic islands so that should be fun and uh but uh, let's hope that we get a, a week next week like we had this week. That was pretty stunning. Well, I appreciate the, I appreciate you mentioning that, Eric. And, uh, yeah, have a great trip. And it'll be interesting to see by the time we speak again on the 23rd where everything is. Look forward to it. All right. Have a great weekend. And for all of us here at Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com, thank you for listening. And we'll have something for you again next Friday. 